Hey, what's up? I'm Rafael de Furia, aka Rafi Dizmi, and I am back at it again on another beautiful Friday night for the last video of 2019, the last video of this decade, and what a decade it has been in my own life of living abroad and in the past couple of years sharing this with you guys. And I wanted to respond to a comment in this video. It wasn't a question, it was just commenting on something that I've been wanting to talk about for a little while, about the kind of being an expat and the loneliness or the sense of isolation that can come along with it. And before we get into that comment in the rest of this video, if you would like to see more content like this about moving to Italy, Italian dual citizenship and living life abroad, please be sure to subscribe with that notification bell turned on. And if you could also give this video a like and share it with your friends, that would be greatly appreciated as that does help out the channel. And a huge thank you to those of you who've been helping to support this channel and helping to make these videos possible this year. Your help is greatly appreciated. So thank you to all of you who have been helping and if you're interested in making more videos like this possible you can go to rafaeldefuria.com slash patreon to help on a monthly basis or to help out once you can go to rafaeldefuria.com slash support and for shirts baby onesies mugs and more with italy centric designs you can go to rafaeldefuria.com slash nyag gear anyway let's get into this week's comment from outshined on my video, expats in Italy and expectations of living in Italy. Outshine said, looking at your Facebook and Instagram pictures, it appears you are always alone, which I find strange as someone who makes himself so available on social media. I'm curious what your social life is like, or do you actually spend most of your time alone? Which they would totally understand in this world that is getting stranger by the day. <laughs> I could say that could be part of it, but there's various kind of levels to how I want to answer this. First, I'll talk about, I know there have been a few of you who've contacted me who are curious about making content online and for starting your own videos on YouTube or just creating content online. And we'll talk about the expat thing in just a minute here, because I think there are some best practices, for lack of a better term, that when you're online, you want to share what's relevant to what you're speaking about. Also, in general, I happen to be a very private person. I enjoy my privacy. I enjoy kind of living my life. Just there's nothing to hide. I just enjoy that privacy and enjoy keeping some parts of my life for me and those people who are involved with that part of my life. So I only share content that is relevant to, roughly relevant to kind of being an expat abroad, living abroad, um, sharing my experience of Italy. But for those people who are involved with my life, I'm the one that signed up to share about my life. And I do share a lot about what's going on. But other people in my life didn't necessarily sign up for that. And they didn't sign up for me to share details about them or what they do or how they go about things. If they wanna share those things, that's for them in my opinion. I share what I share, they share what they share. I know there would be situations, like if I were to meet with friends and it's like pulling out cameras, it's like, why are we hanging out? Are we doing this just to kind of boost each other's egos or are we like actually trying to have a good time here? And so that's why in my social media, you really just see me. Uh, I don't talk about certain other aspects of my life if I'm in a relationship or if I'm not in a relationship. There might be times that I talk about certain things that have to do with those subjects, but unless I feel like something in my life is very relevant to what I'm speaking about, then I don't include that. Do I get that sense of loneliness at times? Yes, but I also enjoy kind of being alone. So I may be alone, but I, but not necessarily lonely. That's just kind of the way that I am. But there are those people who definitely feel as though they do need to be around people all the time. And there's nothing wrong with that. Everybody has what works for them and what makes them happy in life. And for me just to kind of spend more time on my own, that's what makes me happy. And it's not a knock against anybody. It's just, again, this is part of my process for how I work best, how I can be my best me in my life. And even to make these videos, I feel like if I'm hanging out with people every day, then that takes away maybe from what I'm doing in my videos. Because when I'm sitting down and doing my videos, yes, I present information, but for me, it's a conversation. Right now, I'm just sitting here speaking to a camera. There's nobody physically here with me. But after I upload the video, that's when the conversation 
the other side of the conversation starts. It's kind of almost like sending a voice message on WhatsApp or something. And I love that interaction of hearing what people have to say, hearing what they agree with, what they disagree with, what they like, what they don't like. And I think that makes a really great little community that's kind of started developing around some of these videos. There are those regulars that I always recognize every week and I look forward to hearing what they have to say. There's a lot of really thoughtful people who have very interesting things to say. And again, this is one of those things that keeps me going with my videos. Being an expat and that part of being lonely, that I think is something that is definitely worth talking about after all of this kind of background. Now we're finally at that part of the video. When you live abroad, when you're a foreigner, you will definitely get to those points, even if you're someone like me, who enjoys spending time alone. There will be those times that you might feel a bit isolated, and that's something that could have to do with language acquisition. Some of you know, I speak some Italian, but not very well. I can have basic, basic conversations in Italian, but I get very frustrated because I can't fully express myself in a way that I would like to. I feel like I talk like a two-year-old when it comes to Italian. <laughs> I stumble over my words. I can't think of the big words. <laughs> and I very often get very frustrated. I always talk about in my videos about trying to escape from the expat bubble and push yourself to be more with the locals. But no matter where you go, that is very much a difficult thing to do. And that's why I make these videos also is because I don't want to sugarcoat anything. I talk about the things that I think are best, but I don't want to make them sound like it's just a walk in the park. It's just an easy thing. It's just it just happens because it doesn't just happen. You have to work at things just like everything else in life. So is there a benefit to living where other expats live and being with people who speak the same language as you? Definitely. There's nothing so wrong with that. Maybe I've spoken a little harshly about it in the past, but there is definitely a value to it. And so I find that's something that also pushes me to kind of be more on my own because while I can communicate on some level, I can't communicate how I would like to be able to communicate. So that maybe if I get invited out to something will create situations where I'm less likely to push myself to go out because I want to just have fun. I don't want to have to think and break my head over trying to say a basic, simple sentence. Take a look at your own country and the people who have come to your country. There is a reason why groups of people will kind of congregate together and come into pockets and communities is because that's what's familiar to them. But it also makes it difficult when integration is a very good thing to be able to try and do when you're in a new place. Integration will definitely help you to be able to move forward in life. And the less integrated you are, the more difficult that will be. And this is just my opinion here. So if you've been living abroad and you're starting to feel lonely, isolated, these are normal things because when you're abroad, you're away from what's familiar. You're away from maybe those situations that you know how to handle, at least not maybe not easily, but in an easier way. And of course, it's always important to keep a realistic idea of what life can be abroad. There are many people who move abroad trying to escape something or thinking that when they move, oh, the Italians are this way. Oh, the Germans are this way. Oh, the British are this way. Oh, of course, it's going to be amazing when I get there. They're just going to accept me for who I am. And accepting a person for who they are and actually interacting with that person on a regular basis and becoming friends with them are very different. And wherever you go, you take yourself with you and the situations that you would find yourself in, you might find again someplace else. There's this example that I've used many times with someone who contacted me saying that they lived in small town America, saying that everybody in their town was closed minded. They were just so sick of living in a small town because it was just too tiny. But where they were looking to move abroad was the exact same type of place. It was basically the European equivalent of what they were talking about that they were living in in America, like a tiny town, middle of nowhere, farmers, just nothing going on. And that was the exact things that they were complaining about. I mean, even I've had situations where like I've traveled to a place on my own and in the back of my mind, I had the thought, oh, maybe I'll do something this different or that different, or maybe it'll just be a different situation because I'll be in a different place. But again, wherever you go, you take yourself with you. And I ended up falling into kind of the same things that I would do 
anyway. Maybe because I was in a different place, I went out a little bit longer. I took a little bit of a longer walk to see a little bit more of the area, or maybe I was a little bit more conversational than I am with strangers than I normally am. Like, I, I have no problem with striking up a conversation with random people. That's just how I am. That's something I feel like I've gotten more comfortable with after living abroad. People will say that moving abroad changes you, but I completely disagree with that. I think you are always the same person, no matter where you are, no matter when you are, but you grow. You add on to who you are. Maybe there are certain aspects of you that can change, but overall, at your core, you are who you are. Just there are maybe certain things which you become more accustomed to over time. There are things that maybe become more part of who you are. They don't change, but they're just that addition on top. And that's not a bad thing, but I very much don't believe that people do change. It's your perception might change, your way that you go through the world might change. A lot of people talk about, and I've talked about it also, that when you leave your country, you can't just go back because your mind is opened up to just beyond the bubble that you've lived in. It is open up to more than just the reality that you had before. Once you leave your country for the first time, in a sense, there's no going back. Yes, definitely you are the same person who you were before, but there is that extra something inside of you that's been unlocked. And I often hear expats talk about that they went back to America and it just didn't feel the same, or they went back to their country, whatever it might be, and the people didn't feel the same. The people were just, they had changed so much and they had, everything was so different. I would say maybe, my opinion, that might not be the case. It's just your reality has shifted, your reality has grown. Not that theirs has stayed at the same place or has shrunk. It's just that there's a divergence from where you were. Like if you leave America and you have your group of friends and then you go back five years later, two years later, a year later, you all were at this one point a year ago, two years, however long ago. But as time has gone on, your lives have just grown apart. And that's not a bad thing. That's not a bad thing at all. And you all are the same people, but there's been experiences in your life which have maybe changed your desires or have let you know about certain things that you need in your life. And for some people, they might realize that loneliness is something that they can't handle and that they do need that social interaction that they had previously. So it might be necessary to then move to a larger city where there's a larger expat community, a larger English speaking community, or for some people, it might be just the best thing to go back to where you're from. You're not losing, you're not giving up, you're not, it's not a defeat. It's just, you have to realize what is appropriate for you in your life. And so for me, I've realized after having lived in a number of countries now and having been abroad for 10 years, I live the same life <laughs> basically in different places. And I enjoy the place for what it is. But at the end of the day, I end up doing me and I end up being myself. And, and I think maybe it's important to try to improve yourself, but don't try to change yourself because... You have to be true to yourself. You have to be real with yourself. You have to have realistic expectations with yourself to know what you are capable of and not to push beyond what you can do. Maybe at times it's good to push yourself and to become a little bit uncomfortable because sometimes that discomfort is something that introduces you to a whole new part of yourself that you didn't know was possible or that you're maybe glad to become acquainted with. But of course, then there are those times when pushing yourself to that point makes you realize that you don't want to get back to that point again. And so this, of course, is very important to realize before moving abroad, how are you in your social life? What are you like? What do you require socially? Do you get that energy that do you get? Do you feed off of hanging out with other people, having that really wild social life? Or are you someone who really enjoys kind of that more quiet life on your own. What is it that you need in your life? That is something definitely important to think about before moving anywhere abroad, because like I've mentioned also in other videos, if you're from a city, but you're wanting to move out to the country and you're going to a different country, 
maybe hold on for a second. Have you moved out to the country ever before in your life, in your own country of origin? Like going out to the countryside, is that something you've ever experienced before? Are you familiar with that lifestyle? Or are you throwing yourself not only into a new country and a new culture, but a new lifestyle? Is that something you can handle? Definitely try before you buy. (laughs) But if you're moving abroad, even if you are moving into that social life, that social scene, you know people, don't be surprised if at times just because of the language and because you're in a different place far away from everyone you know and love that you might feel isolated at times. That is a very normal and natural part of what it is to be an expat. Hope you've enjoyed this video and maybe at least a few of you have found this helpful and that it made you think about things a little bit more. And if you would like to see more content like this about moving to Italy, Italian dual citizenship and living life abroad, please be sure to subscribe with that notification bell turned on. And if you could also give this video a like and share it with your friends, that would be greatly appreciated as it really does help out the channel. And for those of you who are interested in helping out the channel in another way, you can go to rafaeldifuria.com slash Patreon to help on a monthly basis and rafaeldifuria.com slash support to help out just one time and rafaeldifuria.com slash NYAG gear for shirts, baby onesies, mugs, and more like posters with Italy-centric designs that all go to help make more content like this possible. So thank you to those of you again who've been helping to make these videos possible and who've been enjoying these videos. Thank you for those of you who've been a part of this past year with me or however long you've been watching my videos. I look forward to the upcoming year, what that has in store for all of us. And of course, as always, if you have any questions or anything to say, anything about anything that I've talked about in this video, feel free to leave that down in the comment section below and let's have a conversation about it. Of course, I'm Rafael Di Furia, aka Rafi D is me. I hope you all have a wonderful weekend, a wonderful week, and a fantastic year up ahead of you. I'll see y'all next year. Later.